Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist and a diabetes educator. Today, I am going to talk to you about the worst vegetables for diabetics. Now, you're curious about it? Tune in. Let's get started. Okay, guys. So we had a video talking about the best vegetables for diabetics. So if you want to hear that video after this video, go to the description below, click on that video and enjoy. Uh, there's a little bit more content in there than this video. This video is important because you also need to know what not to eat when it comes to vegetables. Because there is a confusion out there that when, when I say vegetables, people just say, okay, I'll just eat whatever I want, right? And it's a, it's a weakness for a lot of people. And I'll tell you, there is only one vegetable that you should not be touching at all. And I'm not normally that strict. I am very easy and nice, you know. I'm like, I'm not very uh, dictator uh, type of doctor or paternalistic and prohibistic, whatever you call it. Uh, I am more lenient. But when it comes to potato, it just pisses me off. It's just something with potato. It just mess everything up. It's just uh, horrible. So here's why. I'm going to kind of tell you about the different types of potatoes as well. But I mean, to be honest with you, you can't eat anything you want. But when it comes to potato, just take a deep breath and take it easy. I have a table here that I'm going to go over with you. But I'm going to I'm gonna talk to you about something quick um, that's called glycemic load. Most of you know what the glycemic index is, which is, you know, it's a scale from 0 to 100. Uh, it's, uh, you know, if the glycemic index is higher, it's going to spike your blood sugar faster. Now, glycemic load is a little bit different. The glycemic load also accounts for how much carbohydrate per serving. For example, a very good example is watermelon. Watermelon has a very high glycemic index that is supposed to spike your blood sugar very high. But uh, since watermelon is mostly water, uh, your one cup of watermelon does not have a lot of carbs. So the total glycemic load is not only about how fast it can spike your blood sugar, but also how much carbs you're having per serving. And of course, if you sit down and eat uh, half of a watermelon, of a good size watermelon, you will get into big trouble. But if you're having a slice of watermelon, that shouldn't be a big problem. In the same token, uh, same thing applies to vegetables. Uh, the problem with the potato is so glycemic index is even above 100. Like, okay, so well, if the potato was full of water, uh, that may not have been a problem, but that's not the case, right? Potato is very dense. If something looks very dense to you, stay away from it, especially bakery, you know, uh, but potato is also a very dense uh, uh, vegetable. Now, the different types of potatoes, I, as I said, so for example, if I'm looking at here, baked russet potato, you know, a lot of people love baked potato, right? So look at this 111 glycemic index and the glycemic load is 33. Now to give you a good understanding, you want to also, when you're, if you're Googling something and you, you're looking at the glycemic index, you want to stay below 55 on the glycemic index. But let's say glycemic index is high, but you're curious about glycemic load because you think you may think that you're not going to have too much of it. You're going to have a small portion or one serving uh, does not have a lot of carbohydrates. Well, in that case, you also look at the glycemic load. The glycemic load, uh, you should stay below 10, if possible, below 4. Below 4 is the best. Below 10 is acceptable. 10 to 20 is going to put you in trouble. More than 20 is going to put you in huge trouble. Okay? So here is we are looking at uh, baked russet potato. The glycemic load, if you just remember what I just said, above 20 is going to put you in big trouble. Glycemic load of this baked russet potato is 33. 33. There is no way you can control your diabetes by eating baked potato. Unless you go for a marathon, be my guest. You go for a run after eating potato, I'm okay with that. But how many of you go for a long walk or a run after eating potato, right? So I have no problem with actually with potato. As long as you're athletic, you go, you go exercise, you're gonna go work out, 
eat the potato. I have no problem with that. You can you can burn it off. But in this case, if you're gonna sit down, you will have a problem. Now I'm looking at a boiled white potato that is 21, still above 20, right? But it's not 33, but it's still you know about 20. It's gonna put you in trouble. Sweet potato is 22. So a lot of people think that oh, sweet potato is nice and easy. You know, it's gonna it's it's gonna be fine. No, not early. Sweet potato is also 22 glycemic load, which can spike your blood sugar very high. And the yam for Caribbeans, you know, for them, you know, yam is, is more uh, acceptable, they think. But uh, the glycemic load is 20. That's, again, very high, as we discussed. Now, let's compare this to parsnip. Parsnip is very similar to potato. You can mash it. Uh, you can, you know, uh, have use a parsnip just like you use potato. But what's interesting with a parsnip, the glycemic load of parsnip is only four. So why would you not use parsnip and get used to it instead of eating potato? Because it almost tastes the same, but the glycemic load is hugely different, right? So carrots, people think carrots are sweet and blah, da 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 da, but carrot also does not have a lot of carbs. Even though, you know, it, it may taste sweet, but the glycemic load is only two, right? So this is very little. Remember what I said? It's less than four. is very good. Uh, green peas, for example, glycemic load is four. Again, you cannot have too much green peas. You know, it's like a one cup does not have a lot of carbs. So as a result, you know, your glycemic load is not that high. So what's the lesson from today? The lesson is that you should not have any sort of potato. And if you really crave potato, you should go for parsnip. All right, guys. So I hope uh, that helped you. And I hope you benefited from this video. Make sure you give a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and share with family and friends.